Hey everyone, Mike Grossart here with a video today talking to you guys about the secret to happiness. I've uncovered it. And no, it's not necessarily being wealthy or financially independent. In fact, the secret to personal wellness, the meaning of life when it comes to are you going to be happy in your life, it is an hexagon. It is eight points of happiness. I'm going to walk you guys through. I actually wrote a blog article on this a little while back. Um, some of this I grandfathered and took from different sources on the internet, so it's not all my cre creative, um, you know, I just make this up, but I've kind of solidified it in a way that I think makes the most sense and defined it in a way that I think makes the most sense um, for me. And this is actually, if you're out there and you're wondering, you know, you're not happy, you're depressed, or you're trying to find out, you know, what do I do with my life? Um, how do I unlock a better life for myself and how do I become a better me? Well, I want to talk to you guys about how you unlock the ultimate. And this revolves around the idea that humans, we just thrive in change and we thrive when we are continually improving and growing. And in fact, there is no one set static point where, um, you know, if you follow this one formula, uh, it's a set fixed number that'll make you happy. No, it's not financial and it's always changing with your life circumstances. So you're gonna have to adapt the formula to fit your individual needs. And in fact, the variables that are, you know, the coefficients that are affecting those variables are always changing as well. So anyway, here we go, guys. I'm gonna walk you guys through the eight different aspects that'll essentially make a person perfect, whole, happy, and well. The first um, dimension in the, what we call uh, sphere of, of wellness is emotional. Uh, it's, it's basically your emotional, uh, your ability to, to um, effectively cope with life and create satisfying um, relationships, maintaining a positive outlook on the world. It's your overall feeling, um, your ability to focus on your self-care, relaxation, uh, you know, reduce stress, and develop those inner resources that'll help you grow as a person. So. If you can master all eight of these dimensions, you and whatever balance works for you, so some might not focus as much on emotional, they might focus on a different aspect. Uh, if you can get the perfect harmony of all eight of these aspects, you will be happy. Uh, so second, we've got environmental uh, is the next aspect. Environmental is you know about finding a good health to you know have a basically it's supporting your overall health, but in a way that's directed from your environment. So. Uh, making sure your environment, you're in a positive place, uh, filled with people who are positive around you. Um, you want people that are going to encourage your good physical and mental health. You are the average of the five to ten people you spend the most time with. So surround yourself with the right people. If you have toxic people in your life and you're in a toxic environment, in the wrong place, in the wrong city, maybe in the ghetto, maybe in the wrong wherever, the wrong country, the wrong house, living with the wrong people, the wrong roommates, Get that out of your life because that's going to drag down your overall well-being and you're not going to be as happy of a person. So just get your environment, you know, work on your environment. Um, next is financial. This one's a given, guys. Um, basically, it's satisfaction with your current and future um, financial situation effectively. And I think financial independence es essentially is mastery over the financial. And I would argue of all of these items, right, of all of these, um, you know, eight aspects that you have to master, Financial is the one area you can master once and will provide for life. Um, so what, that, what I mean by that is if you master financial first, which is what I did, then you have a lot more time available because you don't have a job, you don't have to work, to master the other seven areas in your life. Um, that's really, really important. So I would argue that financial is the one, ask, one thing you can master once and will provide forever. So you could, you could master your current and future financial future right now. You can take actions to become financially independent so you don't have to worry about anything. And that's why I think that financial independence is the root of freeing up time. And time time and money can solve all problems. That's actually true. Uh, money can't solve all problems, but if you have enough time, enough energy, enough resources with money, you can solve anything. You can find love, you can find anything. Um, so that's why I argue financial independence is still a really pivotal key element of overall personal wellness. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have an abundance, like you don't need to be a decade millionaire or have you know, so much money. You can get by with a lot less than you might think um, to be, you know, you can be lean fire, which is essentially a frugal budget um, way of doing things. So that's mastering your financial well-being. Um, and, and yeah, essentially you don't have to worry about your living costs. Next we have uh, intellectual. 
So intellectual is making sure your mind is stimulated. You find creative ways and outlets to expand your knowledge and your skills. Humans like to grow. And so if you master the intellectual area, you'll feel fulfilled. So just because you have emotional, and environmental, and financial taken care of doesn't necessarily mean that your intellectual uh, is stimulated. This is why I still take on real estate deals. I still am engaged in YouTube, for instance. It's a way in my blog and hit me up on Insta because that's something I'm doing a lot of and Facebook because it provides stimulation for me, right? In a way that, that I get some value from it. So um, occupational is another one. Make, finding personal satisfaction in the work that you're doing. And I don't mean work in the sense of like, you know, I'm working for the man or I'm, you know, grinding and doing renovation work or whatever you're doing. No, I'm talking about, you could be volunteer. It could be filming YouTube videos for free where you make nothing. It could be anything, right? It's just that what you're doing it aligns with your why. It aligns with your purpose. And so if you are chasing the sphere of trying to find what you're good at, right? You find, there's a saying of, um, they call it MAP. And when I used to do consulting, we talk about MAP a lot, which is mastery, autonomy, and purpose. At this intersection of that triangle, you will find perfection around mastering occupation. So if you have mastery over the tasks that you're doing, you have the autonomy and the freedom and the flexibility to decide when you're gonna carry out that work and you believe in the why and you have found that purpose, you'll be at perfect harmony in all of the work that you're doing. Next is physical. And physical is like, I'm thinking going to the gym, getting ripped if you're, uh, if you're a guy, if you're a girl, you're maybe hitting, hitting you know, cardio and you're squatting, whatever you're doing, that keeps your body in really good physical shape. You need to be able to go for like a five mile walk and not be winded. You should be able to go for a bike ride or a jog. In fact, that's why I like to bike everywhere even though I could drive because it fulfills that um, physical desire. The body and the mind, in order to be happy, you need to get some exercise. You need to be getting some physical stimulation in the sense of like your muscles, they, they want to be out there. They want to be out there getting stronger. They want to be out there at least keeping fit. So really important. Um, Again, like I talked about, financial being the only one you can actually hit up once and be done. The rest of these aspects, you're going to have to do every day. You're going to have to keep your physique up every day. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, Mr. Iron Man Olympia, the ultimate, I would say, in like physical strength for, for a male, right? Probably the extreme end of, of a little too big, a little too strong. Um, definitely not a natty because he was hitting up steroids. But, you know, someone who's really strong like that, if they stop for like a month and they just give up on, on that one aspect and focus in the other seven, their physique will deteriorate. So you have to keep at it every single day. You're gonna always have to keep working at, especially physical, mental, like all the rest of the categories, you have to work at every day. But financial, I argue, is a one and done. You can master that and be done with it, which is, that's freaking fantastic. Um, so that's why I always advocate for making sure you have really good financial literacy skills and you're working towards financial independence. Next, we have social. Um, social is really developing that sense of connection, belonging, um, development, and that support system. No matter what happens to you, if you have a solid support system of family and friends and people in your network that, that are close by and that you're close to and that you value their opinion, you can weather any storm. It doesn't matter what comes at you. If there's like your house blows up, something happens, whatever, right? If you have a good social tie system, you have good social ties, it, the research shows people are happier when they have strong social ties. So go out there and network. Um, build that network of people you want to surround yourself with. Connect with family that's that's positive and doesn't necessarily, you know, if they're, if they're destroying other areas of your, your well-being, you know, maybe you need to, to consider separating yourself from them and distancing them, but you need those strong social ties. No man is an island and like physically speaking, we just can't, you just can't do it. Mentally speaking, it just doesn't work. Um, and last is spiritual. And this one's a bit wishy-washy, but I kind of, I like this one because it's sort of the catch-all of everything else that was missed between, you know, emotional, environmental, intellectual, um, and social, I think this is sort of the spiritual aspect. And that's expanding the sense of purpose and finding your meaning in life beyond, you know, it could be your connection to yourself, connection to nature, connection to a higher being. Um, perhaps that's that's God, perhaps for you that's, you know, many gods, whatever that is, maybe it's your connection to the universe. Um, you know, I, I think that this one's a big one. It's, you know, um, I don't know, it's just, what are those things, like, it's like those values. What are those things that are important to you that you want to pursue, right? And, and prove that continual um, evolution of your spiritual growth. Everyone has some form of spiritual awareness, whether they're an atheist or not. They still have a set of core values or things that they believe in to be true about the universe or about whatever. And so that has to align rationally for you to become personally well. So those are the eight aspects of personal wellness. Let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? It This might be... 
the formula. I don't have the co like the coefficients to determine how important each one is to you. Maybe spiritual is like 5% important, right? And maybe maybe financial is 20%. And you know what, two years from now, maybe financial is like 1% important to you and social is like 25% important to you. And that's cool, right? Like how you spend your time in these eight categories is up to you. That's the beautiful thing about it. That is the secret formula. And I know it's a bit vague, but you can sit down and you could ask yourself right now, what are the, these do I wanna work on? Every day when I wake up, I try to focus on at least one of these eight categories. And I try to ask myself, you know, what am I gonna focus on today? Am I gonna to try to build some new social connections? Um, am I gonna focus on my financial well-being? Am I gonna focus on, you know, maybe my environment? There's something in my environment that's not just right right now, and I wanna make it just right, like the Goldilocks. I wanna find that perfect scenario. And so every day I'm striving to be happier, to be more fulfilled, and, and that's always changing. My desires are changing, my needs are changing, and so this equation is going to change. But this is the closest I've found in those nights when I've, you know, I often stay up till three, four, five in the morning, trying to find the meaning of life. And, and I have a lot more time on my hands because I don't have a day job. And I'm doing something that works for you guys because when you get to financial independence, you have a lot of time in your hands, you have to find something to do. And a lot of us search on that quest. It becomes really important for us what makes us happy and what is the secret to life? What is the meaning of life? And I think this is it, guys. Uh, so those guys who are out there still working towards financial independence, if you're working on, on this social um, aspect maybe right now that you're going to shift to financial, let's say, I'm still talking to you guys about how to build the ultimate lifestyle. And the ultimate lifestyle is still 25 times your annual expenses away to unlock your time to focus on these things. I'm going to help you spend less, earn more, and maximizing your returns so you can be the best self that you can be. Cheers, guys.